Hi everyone, it's Ali from Dane and Blades. Right, I'm just finishing off a couple of jobs for this weekend. First of all, I'm going to make a pine cone resin block. Well, I'm going to get everything prepped up for that uh, before I can put it into my um, pressure pot. Uh, I have made it twice already. First time uh, I made it silver, it should have been silver and black. Second time I made it silver and black, but then when I put it onto the bandsaw and I started cutting it out to the width I want it, I just got that all messed up. So basically I ended up cutting it too narrow on one side. So I've got to start again. So I've got my mould and the pine cone is in my oven at the moment, just warming through. Usually get it up to about 65 degrees, let it basically warm up and also dry off, trying to get any little bit of moisture out of it uh, that I can possibly can. Just because I've noticed, I've done it once before where I've used um, a piece of wood that I didn't warm up beforehand and you get a little bit of, even though it's stabilised, the outer surface just has that little bit of moisture because it's, it's during winter, it's cold air, so as I put it in, put the resin in and it started to set, it ended up with little tiny bubbles all the way around the edge of it, so to minimise that, I've put it into the oven, it's warming up now, 65 degrees like I say, and it's probably been in there for about six hours, it's more than, more than long enough, probably need half that, but I've been out today, so I thought I'll put it in for, just leave it ticking over, then it's ready for when I want it. So the resin that I'm using, like I say, it's Illumilite, uh, I need to measure 150 grams worth uh, of part A and part B, the part A I'm going to put the silver in, uh, and then I'm going to do 50 millilitres, or rather 50 grams of uh, each part and put the black into that. So start off with my part A and mix it up, get it levelled up. There we go, that'll do. Then this one for 50, so just re-level it out. That's my part A's done, now going on to my part B's. So, I always find the tops, the part B crystallises a little bit more when it's um, just stood about, so I have to break the top off, that's why the cap's knackered, but 150 of this. There we go. I also, before I use it, Especially at the moment because it's cold in the garage or cold in my workshop, I always bring this inside the house uh, and just let it warm up to a bit more ambient temperature. So it brings it up to about, I don't know, 20 degrees or something like that. It just helps it pour because otherwise it's a little bit too thick. Then it, that also helps, reset that, also helps for it to um, pour in between the bits on the pine cone. There we go, 50 of that. Put that out of the way. Just something else I want to say. I've bought me some a different mic. Obviously, my YouTube's a bit more of a hobby, but I bought me some a, a lav mic. Attached that to the side of my camera, so it's radioing across. Uh, just let me know, see if it's any better on the sound quality. Um, always trying to do that a little bit better, but uh, see how it goes. Right, so the colours. So I'm going to start with the silver in the part A. So I'm going to leave the part B's to one side, bring over both part A's and... Now with the powder, I always seem to put quite a bit in because I've, I've had it before where I haven't put as much powder in and if you, when you're cutting something down into handle material thicknesses, it's sort of... best way to describe it, it thins out a bit. And especially in between the spines on the pine cone, whatever they're called, comment below, um, you don't get as much powder in between them or you don't get as much as the coloration, so this is a mica powder. Give it a good stir in. Like I say, this is just in the part A, I'm going to keep them separated until I put them through the vacuum chamber. There we go. Bit of black in there. You don't really need a massive amount of the black, and I've probably put a bit too much into it, but never mind. Go it everywhere. Mix it up. 
There we go, black as night, perfect. Break that off. Right, now get all these into the vacuum chamber, get all the air taken out of them, and then I can sort the block out. In between time of that, I've got a Kydex sheet that I need to sort out. So the Kydex sheet is for the black and orange short touch and glow in the dark knife. The guy that's bought it wants a, a Kydex sheath as opposed to the leather sheath. So sorting that out this weekend and then I can get it sent over to him tomorrow. Right, let's get these sorted. So those are, are my two lots of resin. I'm just going to basically just tip these over and let them drain in. What I found is if you just pour it in, it usually starts mixing. So now when I mix these up, I've got 12 minutes work time uh, with each of them. So I'll just go and get my mould. Probably here in the background, I've still got the vacuum chamber on. I think I might just switch it off actually. I've got some walnut that's uh, vacuuming. Right, so there's my pine cone in the mould. <sighs> Looks like I've got something stuck in there, so I'll just get it out. Bit of fluff. So, it's lined up about right. This is a case tumbler that I use for polishing up um, cases, bullet cases, so if anybody's into home loading you know what this is, but I find because it gives a bit of vibration it's handy for getting all the air bubbles out in between all the spines in the pine cone. So I'll just plug that on, let it start whirring away. There we go, like I say, it gives a bit of a vibration. And I'll just start with the resin. Scrape out everything that I need. that one, same with this one, right start mixing, typical I didn't start recording so I've got the black and the silver in there, I'm just going to onto here and I'm just going to give it a bit of a shake make sure I get the last remaining bubbles out happy with that now I'll stick that into my pressure pot and let that set overnight and I can show you what it looks like tomorrow right so I've just got a couple of sets to a knives to show you this week uh, first pair um, is a set of conies, so both conies with a Kydex sheath, orange Kydex sheath with them. Uh, these ones have both been given a, an acid etched blade with stone wash. Both of them got pine cone scales on, but one with the, with the green and one with the orange, and then vice versa, orange and green liners. Uh, both of them have a thin liner in between uh, the, the main larger liner and the scales. Uh, this one's got a thin green one. It just stops the orange from blending through from one to the other. Same again with that one with the orange liner. Uh, both of these sheaves have added a, a clip onto them so they can be used clipping onto a belt or put, even swapping over and putting on a pocket clip. They've only got uh, like little sort of Chicago screws tight fitting so they can be swapped from one side to the other quite easily. So that's those two. Uh, those two hopefully going over to Florida shortly. Uh, the next two that I've done, both of them are in black uh, dyed veg tan leather sheaths um, with an extended uh, loop for the belt loop. Because they're going to be used on sort of a military style belt, they just want to be using a little bit longer. Orange stitching because both have got orange liners on them. So this one's another one of the Buckeye Burls. 
Now Buckeye Bill, it seems to vary in colour, so I've got like, quite dark ones and I've got ones with sort of a lighter effect on them as well. I have just received a, a, a large piece of Buckeye Bill uh, from America that I'm going to start stabilising and see what sort of patterns I get out of that. Uh, probably get a good variation out of it hopefully, so should be able to make a few more handles out of it. Like I say, orange G10 liners uh, made from ABL 3mm um, stock with a sabre grind and a secondary bevel. So that's a row stoker. And then this one is a bit of a custom. So I'd say it's a Fallow Stoker custom just because it's with a longer blade, but this one's got a blade of 150 millimeters long. Uh, the guy wanted something with just a, a, a longer blade to it, basically. Uh, it's just got the stainless Corby bolts on it and a stainless lanyard tube, again with the orange G10 liners, but this one's got the pine cone scales that you've seen being made earlier on. Uh, so it's got the silver with a little bit of black added to it as well as it's blended together. So you can just see that coming through. Hopefully these are going out very shortly. I'm just going to get back to getting in touch with the guys. But other than that, everybody else, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>